Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Writer's <laughs> Chat. This is the place we like to gather as writers, and we talk about all things about writing and for writers and by writers. And my name is Jean Wise. I'm one of your co-hosts here, and I'm joined by my other two fellow co-hosts, Johnny Alexander and Bethany yeah. Jett. And we've got a lot of our regular crew in the chat room. I was so excited to see everybody as they were hopping on and all that. So we're excited everybody's here today or watching the replay. It's very important for those of you that spend the time we really do appreciate the time that you spend watching the replay and we hope something every seems like every week we have a supportive community that learns and grows together so it's it's a neat thing so we're glad everybody's here today i'm going to turn it over to bethany to start today she let her introduce our topic today and guide us on what we're going to learn today so it's over to you bethany hey everybody all right, today's topic is, I think we just, we went back and forth several times because the original <laughs> title was like really long <laughs> and wasn't social media worthy. So, <laughs> Not friendly, huh? Yeah, too many characters. So I think this is, um, I think we said on how to prep for the holiday, like how to prep for 2019 during the holiday season. Basically just taking advantage of the hustle and bustle of Thanksgiving and Christmas and Hanukkah and all the things that people are celebrating right now, New Year's, and how to kind of get ready and set yourself up for success for 2019 by doing a lot of the stuff that you don't have time to do during the year now. And it can be a little counterproductive to say, hey, I've got a to-do list like a mile long as I was making my notes this morning. Um, I think a lot of people feel like this is not the time. They want to be relaxing and settling down that I actually think this is the best time to do some of those things where, while you can relax that you just don't have time for during the year. So we're gonna go into social media, websites, computer files, all those kinds of like little things that you can do while you're sitting on the couch or um, if you need to hide from family. <laughs> I have used this excuse, I'll go on record. <laughs> I have work to do. And then you just go take care of those things and then you get a little break to yourself sometimes. So. I think sometimes there's a little bit of a law between Christmas and New Year's too. There's some golden moments there, golden moments that if you watch for them, those times do appear not just to hide from your family, but there are <laughs> moments that we can get stuff done. So I'm excited to hear your list. Well, and the other thing is too, like if the family's watching like a football game or, or, or even a movie that you've seen a million times before, I mean, you can be with your family and be on your laptop. And you know, I don't always recommend that. Sometimes you need to be watching the movie with everybody else, but or the football game or whatever. But you know, but it's okay. I think sometimes to do that too. Just like you're still in the same room and you're still participating and you're still. And if you're doing stuff like this, it's not like you have to just be so focused on it. You know, you can be interruptible, <laughs> and so you can yes. be part of what's going on with your family and still be doing some of these things that we're going to be talking about today. They're just kind of. They just need to be done, and we don't take the time to do them because we've got other stuff to do. Oh, I just thought of another one. <laughs> oh, okay. Whoa. Okay. Uh, let's grow. We're going to take notes. To go for yeah. it, Bethany. All right. So I thought it might be helpful to sort of go through my list because some of you are going to have some of these things, and some of you are going to be like, that's not for me. Um, and I don't want to lose anybody throughout the thing. So, Dean and Johnny Mama. <laughs> Johnny Mama. <laughs> Johnny right, Mama. So we'll pitch in together, but I think just starting at the top of my list, one thing that's easy to do, and I like that you said it was interruptible because none of these things are deadlined. And another thing, another reason why I want everyone to take this seriously about really trying to get these things off your list before like the second week of January is because everybody industry wide is settling down. Like you're like literary wise, um, what do I want to say on record? You know, I know that my agent is finishing up contracts. He's not necessarily sending new ones out. Now, he might be. I don't want to speak for him. But I know, like, uh, people are starting to wrap things up for 2019. So this is a really good time for you to go ahead and get everything in order so that when 2019 starts and people are getting ready then to start acquiring again and go to conferences, all these little tasks that sort of eat away at your time when you need to be really focused can get done now. So I kind of wanted to preface that. Dean, did you have Say again. Um, did you did you raise your hand? No. <laughs> 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 All right. First thing, computer files. 
I can't tell you how much time I have wasted looking for files. I like even some of my clients because I sometimes I won't take the time if I'm rushing with uh, getting their stuff saved. I'll save it into like iCloud because I know it's safe, but I don't put it in the proper file. And so I keep telling myself like, okay, I'll just do that later. Well, now I have like some clients have three files with the same name and it's like yeah. that now has created a mess. Things like that, like your downloads folder. Um, and I'm, I think PC has downloads folder too. I'm not sure where your stuff goes down. Yeah. I know for the Mac, Justin's always getting on to me about my desktop and my downloads folders. And so what I've been doing recently is just organizing on my computer, the files by kind instead of name or date created mm. on the desktop and in my downloads folder. And so then because all the documents are all then together, you can select all the documents and I've been dragging them over into my documents file. All of the screenshots, which I never titled or named them, they need to be gone through and most of them probably deleted, but those are all images. So I've been selecting all of them, moving them over into the pictures folder just to kind of get the desktop and downloads folders cleaned out a little bit. And um, my husband works in networking and IT and he said that um, the more things you have on your desktop, the more the computer has to crawl through that. And so the less things on your desktop, the faster it goes. Like, he didn't say that was for all the folders, but he did say that specifically for the desktop. He gets really onto me when it's messy. So that's one thing. Sometimes I'll just do a select all of the desktop, move them into a folder that I title desktop moved and the date, and then I move that into a different folder. So I still have all the desktop things, but now they're in a folder called desktop, which is a hot mess. <laughs> all that stuff needs to be gone through. And this is a good time to do that because you can get interrupted at any time and you can go back and start just kind of cleaning out files. Thoughts on that? <laughs> I I just, a, lot of, a lot of that stuff we no longer need. We download yes. one thing. And so the delete button is our friend. The mm -hmm. delete button is our friend. The desktop and the downloads yes. on, on, on that. But I have gotten in the habit now when I take a screenshot, I almost, I won't say 100%, but I try to go right then or as soon as I get, you know, out of whatever I took the screenshot of and renaming it I'm so to that, that I know what it, and lots of times it's receipts, right? And then mm -hmm. sometimes you'll get an email, sometimes you won't, but at least that way I've got the screenshot and I'll just put whatever it was, you know, in the date so that um, I can find it if I need to. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to only keep things on my desktop that are either current things that obviously I haven't gone back and I need to fix my client folders and all that kind of stuff and make an easier system. So like the pressing things are there right now, but the same thing I'm, that's like, um, jerk talked about last week, like attaching a habit. When I take the screenshot, I've been doing that with school. Cause I always take a screenshot when it submits my assignment. So I have like yeah. my things, um, going in and doing it right then and then moving it into the document folder or the image folder, wherever it needs to go. Um, I'm trying to attach that habit to that too. That's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Great. Um, next. Yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I don't know if anyone else does this, but um, I'm trying to move a lot of my folders and my computer off of my actual hard drive into an online storage system, either iCloud, Dropbox, or Google Drive. And because the, um, especially the thinner the computers are, there's not as much space for them. And with as much travel as we do as writers, uh, having a lighter laptop is better. And so we are in the process of getting all of my stuff moved over into one of the three cloud, like iCloud, Dropbox, or Google Drive. And now I'm paying for all three. <laughs> so on oh, my yeah. list, because I use them for different things, is figuring out how to minimize that and maybe get rid of one, because I definitely still am going to need two of them. How do you organize? How, how do you divide those out then? How you said you use them for different things. Can yeah. you give an example of that? A lot of my um, folders like that are on that I would normally keep on my computer. I've started moving those into the iCloud because that way if I, if I lose my computer or if it breaks, right. my computer is still my computer, no matter what computer we get. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, so iCloud, yeah it's becoming yeah. my <coughs> for all. And that's kind of what I'm doing is getting everything off of my hard drive into iCloud. And my husband's like, you need to delete most of this. <laughs> so we're not paying for tons of storage for stuff that doesn't matter. Um, that's one thing. Um, Dropbox, I use it a lot for images. And because some of the pictures are so big, like if I use like um, hot stock photography kinds of things, that goes into Dropbox. And I'm moving files out of there, which I was doing for client things. And I'm putting it over into iCloud. And I'll probably keep it because it's an easy way to coordinate with your clients because you can send them a Dropbox link 
um, I don't, wouldn't give anyone access to my iCloud drive. So I'll probably keep a really right. low end of Dropbox, but I can pull a lot of things out of there. But I use that for a lot of photo storage. So that's where my, a lot of my photos are that I use. Because I can get hey, on my the same thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, with, no, you know, I interview novelists for Novelist Unwind, my web, that website. And so I've got all these videos. And I put, unless I have put them right up to YouTube, right away which is usually what i do but i wasn't doing that at the beginning i was saving them to dropbox first and if it's one that i know i'm going to have to edit before i send it to youtube i send it to dropbox and that way i feel like it's safe it's not just on my laptop right. and i'm not going to lose it but i really like the icloud so like what happened with me is i had my pc and i had desktop files and document files so two different things so when I finally decided that I would start using this Mac that I bought about a year before I actually started putting a lot of use into it, I know, long story, and it's silly, but that was the way it happened. Um, <clears throat> I think it was Justin, uh, Bethany's husband, husband, who moved everything to iCloud, but still now when I go to my iCloud drive, I've got this desktop folder and these documents folder, and really I only need one. I don't need, I mean, I don't need my stuff divided up into like, two different major sections. So it's like, that's one thing I would like to get kind of done. And like, I've got blog images, like like two or three different files of blog images instead of just maybe, I want them for the different blogs, but it's like, it's not working out that way. So I don't know. I mean, it's just like, just trying to get things settled. But I also create an archive file. And when there's a folder that I really don't want to lose, that I'm not like, needing it to be real accessible, I move it to that archives folder. And that way it's there, but it keeps my line of folders not quite as long, I guess. Good idea. Yeah. I have a tech question on this. Let's say I have a, the photos from the last trip to Ireland, okay? And I'm done with them right now. And I have them in a folder that says Ireland 2018. I don't need to keep those on my desktop. I'm done with that. So I move them, I save them to iCloud or Google Photos or wherever I save them to. Then can I delete them from my computer? You can't. Justin would probably tell you to, like people are saying, a flash drives. He would probably make me put them on a flash drive somewhere and then save that flash drive and have it stored. That's another thing we're doing too. Like I might move photos over to the iCloud or even Amazon Photos. They have a storage place. He's trying to get me to use that. So we'll probably move them over, put all of them onto, a, so we have a hard copy of them, and mm -hmm. then we'll hopefully put that somewhere safe. Um, I did say in the chat, um, I'm always afraid I'm going to lose a flash drive, which is why I use cloud yeah. storage. I have lost a flash drive. I have no idea where that thing went, and it's scary because it's like what all was on it. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't even remember. I'm not very responsible. Once, you, once you've downloaded it to either a flash drive or iCloud, you <coughs> go through and delete it from your computer. See, mm -hmm. I'm paranoid to delete it from the computer. <laughs> well, how do you delete it from the computer without deleting it from the iCloud drive? That's what I'm wondering. Yeah, I'm afraid of when I hit. Is, is that a tech question anybody knows? <laughs> Justin. <laughs> okay, ask Justin and follow up next week. <laughs> so none of us know. I guess okay. that, like if it's under the iCloud Drive folder, you could delete the ones that aren't under the iCloud Drive folder, right? I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> and, and Mary brought up about an external hard drive too. And I just back up on that one. Yeah, I do. <laughs> so you're exactly right on on that. And I like Sherry Sher Lynn's idea, but sometimes on a book, she emails it oh, to her. So I do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's important. Actually, I had a, a proposal that we were sending it to a publisher, and I needed to make some changes before Kyle sent it out. And the copy that I had on my computer, what it um. You know how sometimes it won't let you open. It says it's corrupt. And I had not copied myself on that email to him. And thankfully he had it and he forwarded it back to me. But ever since then, I've been doing the same thing, like keeping a, maybe two co copy, but then emailing it, just either blind copying myself in and just putting that like in a folder on my mail thing, because that was that I was like, if I have to go back and redo all this work, that's, that was so I, scary. I know I've mentioned this before, but I always date like, like my drafts every day or whatever day, like yesterday when I was working on it's HAC 25 is the title of the book. 
you know, 18, 12, 10. Mm -hmm. And I did not email that one to myself, but usually I do. It's like at the end of the day, right. I can email it. Great tip. Great Even with tip. my exam, my exam the other night, I will, okay, if I'm working in Word, because I have to submit it that way, I will email it. I'll do like, you know, click the share, email it to myself, and I'll just put the time, like, you know, 8, 8.44 p.m., you know, 9.15 mm -hmm. p.m., so I've always got the last draft. And then once it's submitted and the class is over, like for the final, I just go back and I delete all those emails because I don't need them anymore. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's been helpful, too. Um, Again, delete is our, our delete button is our friend. It Most is. Most <laughs> Okay, so Thank ask you. Justin a little for a little guidance. <laughs> that might be a great tip to share with everybody, so we feel better. Yep, we'll find out about that. We'll find out. We'll follow up. Okay. All right. Okay. Another thing to that to do is to if you utilize bookmarks in Safari or Internet Explorer or whatever internet program that you're using, I love um, to bookmark things on my favorites bar with folders and subfolders and a lot of them don't matter anymore so that's you know this is a good time to go ahead and clean out some of those saved um, sites or things that you don't need or maybe reorganize them a little better so you can find them because usually I have like maybe six folders that I touch all the time and the rest of the stuff in there I'm never going to look at again but I didn't want to lose it so this is a good time to evaluate do I need this for do I actually need this for 2019 if the answer is yes put it somewhere that you're in a folder you're actually using or Maybe just make a smaller one that says things I don't want to lose. But really, you could just pin them, which might be an easier thing just to create a Pinterest board and say, you know, things I like and just create a pin for them that way and then get them off your toolbar. Yeah. Um, that would be extra steps, but those might be, it could be a resource yeah, file exactly. and then start saving things there, which gives you activity on Pinterest, which is also a goal instead of putting them on the bookmark. So it's just like a different way to think about how to yeah. save information. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't take enough time sometimes just to step back and look at this. Uh, the, we need these computers. You know, the, this is a mate. It's almost like the equivalent of the car, you know, for, um, for a driver, anybody that drives. But th these are, this is the vital tool. I'm touching it right here. This is the vital tool, you know. Yeah. And so we do need to mate, do the maintenance and the clean it up every once in a while. Um, Sherry Lynn had a question about iCloud. iCloud is super safe. It's Apple, and they they take your privacy extremely seriously. So yeah. it's Mac, Apple. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay, the next one is phone. This is also a good time to delete apps on your phone that you're not using. Um, going through your folders that you've created, games that you're no longer <laughs> playing. If you have like a shared family thing where apps automatically download on your phone when another family does that they like my phone happens to have tons of those and go there and delete them sometimes i'll download apps that i think will be helpful for productivity and if i haven't used them in several months i'm probably never going to need them or use them and so just get them off because you can always re-download them so yeah. this is a good time to clean your phone out and pictures getting pictures off your phone will make them go a lot faster too i have to do that I do too. 11, I do too. <laughs> that is back to the original idea. That is the perfect example of something you could do with mm -hmm. your family while they're watching a football game or a movie. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, that mm -hmm. is perfect. Going through photos and then deleting the ones that you actually don't need because so much of the storage that we use for photos is wasted. Like their photos, it's 16 selfies. You know, you found the best one, but you left all 16 on there. Or like oh. landscape photos. Like you might use one of those, but do you need all 25? Like, it's just wasting that space. I think we really need to start thinking like, and I'm talking to myself here. Am I actually going to use this if I haven't touched it in the last year, two years, three years? Yeah. And it needs to not. go. Yeah. And not yeah. like that. Think of the pictures that you take of things like, like I'll be in the airport and take a picture of a book I might want to read someday. Well, you know, yeah, maybe as if I don't have enough books <laughs> already <laughs> that I need to be reading before I buy more. Or, you know, like I will, um, like I do a lot of giveaways and when somebody emails me their address, I often go ahead and take a picture of it because it's a lot quicker for me when I'm getting ready to address that envelope to find the picture on my phone with their address and to go back to the email. So, you know, it's those kinds of things. There's pictures that you're just sort of taking as reminders and, you know, then needing to delete those off your, mm -hmm. off your phone. That sounds good. Justin would be proud of me saying that. No, if I would only do it. <laughs> That's um, a good thing to do when you're waiting in line at a store, though, too. I mean, pull out your phone, just go through your pictures and start deleting ones that you know that 
you know, you're not going to need anymore. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of that, um, yeah. my mom has a tip for how she gets rid of email in her inbox and I've started using it and it's been really helpful. So I'm going to let you talk about, um, using email on your phone and how you use email on your phone. Oh, well that, yeah, I wouldn't even have thought of that as a tip because it's just such a natural thing to do. But I do, it, this is one of the, yeah, this was a great time saver for me. And actually, I think it was the reason I went, I put off getting a smartphone for a long time. And I think that this was one of the reasons why I finally did was because I can go through my email and delete them so quick. Every morning, that's one of the first things I do. I just delete all those emails, <laughs> like those newsletters or you know, even from loops that maybe I'm not interested in that topic or whatever and, and just go through and delete them. And then when I'm on my laptop, those emails that are left are usually ones that I'm interested in and that is, then I can go through them. So yeah, I think having email on my phone is just so handy because of being able to delete email so quickly that I don't need to be worrying about and also flagging ones that I know I need to answer. So then when I, again, when I get on my laptop, cause I, some emails you don't want to answer on your phone, you know, I want my signature there or whatever, my little image and all. So, you know, then when I get on my laptop um, and go to my email, I can check those flags real quick and know that those are emails that I need to answer and take care of those first. Yeah. Flags. Yeah. Cause on your, if you have an iPhone and you're using Mac mail, so those are, that's the two programs that we're specifically talking about like right now. You can click the edit button and like all of them will shift over and there'll be little circles down the line. And basically you're just tapping like this all the way down. And then it's one delete push instead of like when I'm on my inbox, you have to wait for it to come out. I mean, there's like, it's, it's milliseconds, but yeah. we're so used to things happening fast that those milliseconds take longer. So mm -hmm. just going through and tapping to get rid of some of those emails is a lot faster. If I'm on my computer, I will do a, um, sometimes like newsletters will come up at the top because they come out in the mornings typically. Mm -hmm. So I'll just put like the sender, like Bath and Body Works, for example. I'll type that, type Bath and, because nothing else pops up with that. Um, and then all of the Bath and Body Works emails will show up um, in my, in, the ones that are in my inbox. And I'll just scroll down through, make sure there's nothing, like I'm not waiting on a shipment or anything. And I'll just do a select all and do, delete them all at once. They, go, they leave and then I look at the next newsletter. If I'm actually take, gonna take time to start deleting things out and I'll start batching if it's been a while. Mm -hmm. But if you're sitting down like for the day, we don't have a ton of email, that's a, a fast way too. It's a great that's way to, to do that. And Sherilyn said that she's unsubscribing and I'm, I'm trying to do that too. If, uh, sometimes I want the emails even if I don't really read them. Like, cause you, sometimes you get good coupons and stuff. But, you know, basically, yeah, unsubscribing when it's somebody that you know that you know you're just not interested in that info. And and I, you know, you feel kind of bad about that because you feel like you're hurting, going to hurt somebody's feelings. But you know what? Really, it's best just to, if you're not interested, it's best just to, because they're paying, they may be paying for you for one thing, you know, and, you know, because there is a fee for most email services depending on the number of subscribers. So don't feel bad. Just Just do it. I expect to get a lot of unsubscribes around the first of the year as people, because that's when people do it. Yeah. Right. And again, you know, you talk about unsubscribe. That is a great thing. She does it weekly. I thought that was interesting. Sherilyn mentioned she does that weekly as a cleanup. But again, to think mm -hmm. about it right now, this time of year, as things pop up, I have a tendency to do that before we travel because I don't want to come back to a bunch of emails. Anything that comes in, do I don't not want it, you know, mm -hmm. to clog up my own. But I've noticed I did a fair amount of online ordering this year, and almost all, now I'm getting all yeah. these places, emails, emails, emails. And so if the package, I like what Bethany said, if the package has arrived, and I, I'm satisfied with it, then I unsubscribe right then and get cleared out. Cleared out. Another thing I'm doing is with email, and this takes some time, but I'm retraining which emails go to which inbox. And so this isn't going to work for every personality type, but I have several email addresses. And so <laughs> like um, all of the ones that come in that I want to be able to look at like marketing stuff or social media and things that I like pretty much newsletters from people, or if you know, give me your email and I'll send you the PDF of whatever, those all go to education at bethanyjet.com. So they don't go to my email. It's basically at any point, if I haven't looked at them, I'll just go back, I'll just start scrolling through and I'll say, okay, I'll look at everything from this month and half of last month in date order. And then I'll just select all the rest, don't even look at them and I just do a mass delete. And so 
if because it's not going to be relevant so much you know what i'm saying that's one way to clean out that inbox and it keeps it out of my business ones oh. but one thing i've started doing is like a lot of the junk email goes to one like you know bath body works or stores and things like that but it was also the one that i have had the longest so doctor's appointments or things that are actually like I needed to get these emails and they're getting buried. I've started using my iCloud email. So when I see one of those come in, mm -hmm. I take a few minutes and go update my preferences, my email preferences, and I will change the email to my iCloud email. So those stop going into there. So <clears throat> I'm sort of like starting to, to be able to only look on when I open my, I use Mac mail, which I love that program. Um, I can select the inbox that I only want to look at and I only have to deal with that at one time. So if I'm not doing serious writer stuff, I don't see serious writer emails. If I'm working on family stuff or make sure the doctor stuff is good, I only go to my iCloud. So like that can also help you with email time as well is just having more than one email address right. and training things to go there. So you only have to look at certain things at a time. I have another tip too, but What's I also that? want, Sherilyn has a good one too. She says she hit select all and then deselect the email mm -hmm. that she wants to keep and then hit delete. So that can be, if you know those, that you have a lot more you're going to delete than keep that would be a good good thing but i also have another uh, little tip too about email on my phone um i i was so thrilled when i found this out like okay like right now i don't know if you can see that it's like unread mm -hmm. i didn't mean to open that um unread that's all i keep on my phone because i love it when this is empty and it's empty either because I've read it or I've deleted it. And I mean, I don't care if my inbox on my laptop, I mean, I know there's this movement about zero email in your inbox. <laughs> that, does, that doesn't bother me. But boy, I do not want all those on my phone. That is just one of those things. And, and I love it when that is zero. So that's, if you keep it on unread, you don't even see all the other, um, emails and there's a, there's a setting to do that so that so you can just see the unread ones and get rid of them or read them and deal with them later on your laptop i find the challenge i started a year ago a second email and my goal was to that's what i signed up for bed bath and beyond you know i'd always give them that but then i'd forget to go, ever go check that one so i i kind of like the idea maybe coming up in 2019 with the trigger of like once a month the first of each month go to that email and get rid of the junk stuff I've signed up for or see if there's something in there I need but I forget mm -hmm. that second email so you're inspiring me to use that second email I've, already, I've got it established it wouldn't yeah. be anything to use that as for signups uh, uh, on that way on that they're asking about PCs uh, Mary I think is asking a good email program at PCs and boy I'm not an expert on a PC at all so I can't help I, I used to have Outlook on my PC and I, and I really liked it and then it did an upgrade and it wouldn't accept it anymore. I don't know what that was all about. And that was another reason that I was really glad to start using my Mac. But um, yeah, if, if Outlook works on your PC, I think it's really good. And I don't know anything about Thunderbird though. I've used it a little bit, but I think it works on Mac and PC. But I think, I mean, I would just look into it and see if it's something that you like. But I like folders and Outlook does that which is why i really when i got my mac i loved mac mail yeah i like the folders and mac but that's something you have to periodically go clean out also because i have a lot of stuff i've stuffed over there on the on that the those folders tons of, tons of tons stuff of that i no longer need mac mail. <laughs> yeah I no longer need and again that's something to do while you watch a good christmas movie mm -hmm. Yeah. And it really, I mean, it doesn't take that long. I mean, I had thousands of emails and I sat down one night in a couple hours. I had them resolved and cleaned out. That yeah. was a few, I mean, that was a few months ago and now I probably have thousands again, but you know, it's like it, you think it's going to take forever. It, it really, I mean, it might take a couple hours, but then it's done, you know? Um, one thing you can do if you're ever looking for software programs, like Mary said, Outlook doesn't work on her PC. If I'm ever doing research on social media schedulers or anything, there's a lot of blogs that will do, you know, program versus program. So I would type in Google Outlook space VS for versus space and see what pops up in the search results. Um, or even just click enter and see what pops up. Cause that's, I found a lot of programs that way, just looking for a comparison to something that I already knew, that would be my suggestion. Do an outlook mm -hmm. versus and see 
what people have done on comparisons and see which one works best. That's a good point. Good point. What else you got for us, Bethany? All right, let's move to social media. Yeah. And then we'll go to blogs. Okay. Okay. So for your website, I'll go website first. Um, I would go through and see what plugins you actually don't need and get them out of your oh. site. Like which yeah, ones are yeah. not needed anymore or can you, do you need to update them? Or I would take a look at that. Um, I would also take a look at which pages on your website are no longer relevant and maybe delete some of that out, just creating like maybe faster optimization. Um, another thing you can do is add alternative text. It's called alt text um, to your images, like your featured image or any pictures that you have on your mm -hmm. site. Um, and this class actually that just finished, it was called Communication by Design for my master's program. And we learned about Section 508, which is for government websites. And basically, you have to have a way for people um, with disabilities to be able to get the information. So it can't just be like all text. And so we had to go through and evaluate for one of our projects, a government site, because it's a required for government sites, and to see if they were actually like up to the 508 standards. So I know all about Section 508. <laughs> code but even if you're not a government site sites should oh it just got dark in here um the american disability act the ada also requires that people who have websites have different ways for people to get information and so alternative text was one of those things so if someone just can't really see the image um when you scroll over the image you know how a little box comes up with words in it that's the alternative text and so you can add that um in the back end of your site, in the picture, there'll be a little spot that'll say alt text. That's where you put, you know, this is Mayor Joyner, you know, presenting the key to the city to Johnny Alexander. Like that is what I would put on the government. Yeah. I never knew what to put in that box. That's what pops up if someone scrolls over top, that's what they're gonna see. And it is searchable for SEO. So like for Serious Writer Academy, um, for people's, um, like this is something I need to do and go back and make sure it's done in all of them. I want to make sure the name of the course, the name of the person, and then I put Serious Writer Academy in that alt text as well, so that it starts boosting rankings. Wow. And that's something, that, um, that's something that needs to be done. It should be done on your website. And that's not all Section 508 or the ADA. So like, I don't want people like, that's not what ADA is. Like, I know there's more to it than that, but that is something that can be done while you're sitting there watching is just going through your media files and making sure the alternative text is in there. As wow. So you don't even have to go to each blog. You can just go through the, yeah, that makes sense. Just go through the media files and, and change it. So that'd be real bad. Yeah, I would double check though, since if you, if you use it on more than one, you might want to see if it's popping up. Like, I don't know. I'm gonna have to go yeah. to this. Stuff. Yeah. But just make sure like the alt text is in there. It's good for your it SEO. It's great point. Great point. That was, yeah. a, that was a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you were talking about different, Oh, go ahead, Jeannie. No, I was just saying this might confuse the, the whole thing, but there's a lot going on with websites now. A lot of us use um, WordPress, but the new word the new WordPress dradically changing and, Gutenberg, and most of what I've seen people say don't update for a few more weeks so they work out some of the bugs, but apparently that became live this week. And so I chose not to update yet. So yeah. I took my automatic update off. I can um, give you a little bit of a hint about that. I mean, I don't want to get too far into this. It yeah. updated automatically on one website, at least, that I, I do. Because I do four blogs. I've got mine. I've got Novelist Unwind, Mid-South Christian Writers Conference, and Midwest Almanac. So I don't know about, I know it has not on Novelist Unwind. I don't think it has on Mid-South um, Christian Writers. I'm not sure about Midwest Almanac. But it did on mine, it just as I am in the middle of blogging 25 days of blogmas, which I had not blogged for quite a while, but so I'm in the middle of this. And when it happened, I was a little bit like, oh, no, but fortunately, what I'm doing is just this little classic of the day series. And it's an easy blog post to do and it's an easy picture to put up. And I have used it as an opportunity to get used to using mm -hmm. Gutenberg. And it's a bit of a, a learning curve. And there's a couple of things about it I don't like. For example, when you want to change the, the color of your title or something, you know, in the blog it's post itself. Yeah. There are colors that you can choose from, but you can also choose your own color, which is nice. You know, it's got the color wheel, but it's like, well, now I've got to remember what number I use if I'm trying to be consistent. So I took a picture of it with my phone. So now I've got this picture on my phone 
with that number. Now, because I haven't changed it, it actually is the color that keeps popping up. But if I was, if I change it, I would imagine, you know, then I wouldn't have it anymore. So it is a bit of a learning curve there, but it's actually kind of fun the way it, way it does. And I sort of am liking it. I'm not sure I'm going to like it for novelists and wine though, because I've got a real template with how I do those things that I know how to do it. And I'm afraid that it's not going to be as easy. I mean, I, you know, I think it's going to be a little bit harder for me to get used to using it on that one. So I don't know. I'm going to try not to update that one. Yeah. And they said watch your plugins because a lot, a lot of us have, I probably have 20 plugins more, more on my, on my main blog. And a lot of them will take a couple weeks to get updated to work. So I'm just going to wait after the first of the year. <laughs> I got my ad. So that's totally off the topic. I'm sorry, Bethany. No, that's a, and, I, it was a getting, hot issue this week. Yeah. Getting back on topic sidebars. Look at your sidebars. Are they what they need to be? Are they what they should be? Are they in the order you still want them to be in? And, you know, people are kind of, I think, getting away from sidebars a little bit. So, you know, I, I maybe not, but it just seems like I don't see as many on websites as I used to. So comments on sidebars, anybody? Yeah. Make sure you have a search stuff. I, yes. <clears throat> I still use sidebars. I think they're wonderful, like little advertising on the side, you know, that's neat place to collect things. Like they're like a folder. Yeah. For, your, for your readers, you know, the, if they want some info, it's right there. Easy to find, like the search bar. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. On that way. And that Rachel said she, she doesn't like the photo aspect of the update in WordPress. It's a step backwards and see, I haven't used it yet. So yeah. I'll keep that in mind. So appreciate that, Rachel. It, I think in the next couple of weeks, all the little bugs will be worked out and things will be caught up and by the first of the year we won't even be talking about this you know yeah. like i kind of like the photo one because now you could just upload it and it would come right up instead of like going uploading it to your media library i mean it goes to your media library too but you don't have to go there and do it you can just it'll just upload but it is a little bit of a like i had some problems getting it where i wanted it to be a couple times and actually had to like um just delete the content in one box and put it in another box and then put the first box okay. down here and remove that box so I can get it. But, but I'm getting to where I can do it. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just one of those things. You just gotta keep playing just a, with it. Just another learning curve. It but is. We're gonna stay is. with WordPress. It's something we're probably gonna have to do. So yeah. sorry for that rabbit trail, Bethany. Oh yeah. <laughs> Back to work. Back um, to work. Another thing to do with blog posts, this is a good time to put blog posts on medium.com. <gasps> That's right. I forgot about medium. So like maybe repurpose some of those posts and then um, this is a good time to tweak them for a medium audience as well. So I wouldn't do like a legit copy paste. I would do a copy paste, but then I would go through and like maybe change the intro a little bit or the conclusion, add a couple photos. This is a good time to learn medium and it's a great place for you to find new readers. So we did a whole uh, writer's chat on Medium. So this is a good time to do that. One of my goals. <laughs> that is one of my goals too. I totally forgot about it, but I, it's something I really do want to, that's the, like the new social media platform I want to get on. And um, one thing too is, with. Um, yes, old newsletters that you've sent out if you if you are a teacher in your newsletters and so you have some paragraphs in there that's giving information those things can be repurposed into blog posts so uh, that's one of my things too with the serious writer newsletter each opening is is almost a mini blog post we give lots of resources and things away which is you know it's a very informational newsletter and those are posts and so um one thing we want to do is repurpose some of those for your website so think about where you have content and then think about putting it on the other platforms um, and if you're not a blogger, like I don't blog very often, uh, if you're on social media on Instagram, why not take the photo from Instagram and the caption that you just wrote, extend it slightly and add that to your WordPress. I mean, that could be your, your little mini blog post, but then you've got it in two places. So just think about this is a good time to start recurating some of your content for the platforms. Yeah. Yeah. And Sherilyn said about updating links, mm -hmm. Share links it's always a good thing to do on all over. She's asking more for, about medium. It's the way you spelled it the first time, Sherilyn. It's M E D I U M. I think it's just .com, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. We do have a, um, there's a, if you go to YouTube and the writer's chat channel, you should be able to find the, the replay for that. Okay. We did do a whole program on it. 
-hmm. it, um, and just so for the recording, it, it's a place where people can write and people will pay to read and people pay to write in different publications on there. Like I think on that medium, um, YouTube or medium YouTube, the medium when we did, I think at that time I said I was going to look into it and I still haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to be using it. So this is a good time for, for these kinds of things to start working on it now when there's not a lot of pressure. So that way when you're busy again in 2019 with, you know, more writing projects and things, you can attach the habit. You write the blog post, you retweet yeah. it. And it goes off again. Um, some people even use medium as their main blog. So their email newsletter will be like, as one guy has like two sentences and then he has a link to his medium article. And that's what goes out in his newsletter. I mean, sometimes his emails are literally two sentences. Wow. And then you can click over and read the article if you want. So I have it set on my recurring weekly calendar on, I think it's on Thursdays, put this week's blog on medium. And then oh, just, good. Good right for you. Awesome. Yeah, just pops up every week. And sometimes I think of it today is when my blog post comes out. So sometimes I think of it today and I just do it real quick because it doesn't take long and I haven't tweaked them. Well, I'm, you're inspiring me to tweak them a little bit better for that audience. So I'm getting some, followers over there but not a lot yet so it'll yeah. be interesting to evaluate into 2019 if this is a step I still want to continue mm -hmm. that is a good segue because let's go pop over to social media for a second um there are some social media platforms that we don't talk about a whole lot uh recently I went over to Goodreads and there's a little button that says find friends from Twitter or something like that and so I was like oh okay so I clicked it and all of a sudden I had all these people requested to be my friend automatically from Goodreads, who I know on other platforms, my numbers shot. Don't you think I put that in my proposal? <laughs> I oh have my my X number of Goodreads followers and friends. I'm going to Goodreads right now. <laughs> uh, I, would start, I would start looking at, LinkedIn does it all the time. Here's your contacts. Do you want to send them an invite? Um, see what other platforms have those kinds of things. With Medium, you can, uh, Twitter owns Medium, and so you can also do the same thing there where you can reach people on Twitter who are following you on Twitter. There, um, it's a good way to kind of boost some numbers with people who are on following you or friends with you on other platforms, but they're not on the other ones, but they would be, and so that can send the request. So that, that's, um, that shot up. And so one thing I've done in the last few months is started making some Google spreadsheets, and I resisted Google Drive for a long time. But being able to work on a spreadsheet or a Word document from any computer, anywhere, anytime, and collaborate is so much fun, and it's easy. And so that's part of my bookmarks now is like a social media tracker. And so you just put the date and the number of followers, and then you can set a little formula to show how much of an increase you've received from this date to this date kind of thing. And those are numbers you can put in your proposal. So this is a good time to get a social media tracker set up and if it's um in a google drive you act if it's a google sheet which is an excel basically google's version of excel you can bookmark that specific url so you can have that in your favorites folder you could even put like a little social media folder on your favorites toolbar and then you can have my tracker and then you can click it and then you'll always be able to update it you know right in the moment. So you're not really having to find your piece of paper or open a document to do it. It's just right there in real time. So that's really helpful too. Um, LinkedIn, this is a good time to get your CV, your curricula vitae set up on LinkedIn. You should have all your writing and stuff over there, add pictures to it. Go ahead and start doing like some of the more work that goes into it. You can add sections. Like I have a section called courses that I've taken and I don't think it's one that LinkedIn gives you. I think it's one that I kind of created from their little sidebar kind of thing. So if you've paid for courses, I put those in there because I want people to know like, here's kind of like what I've, what I've learned and who I've learned from those kinds of things. So put stuff like that on your LinkedIn profile too. And I suggest go ahead and start reaching out to people. Um, you can do similar things that you do on other social media. Like on Twitter, if you're looking for people to follow who you think will also like to follow you, I'll often go to my mom's and I'll say, okay, who's following? Johnny Alexander, they probably would like my stuff too. And they're probably people that I would want to follow as well. So then I go through and follow those people. So it's like, I've used her list to sort of weed out the clutter of Twitter to see who I want, you know, to start engaging with, to build my platform and to engage with them. You can do that on LinkedIn too. You can see their connections. You can, it's much faster on the phone, but I can go to her first or her second connect, my second connections with her, which is on LinkedIn. If your first connections, you're connected. A second connection would be 
someone that she's connected to that I'm not in a second tier kind of thing. Um, so I can go there and I can see, and I can just, same thing like on the phone, you can just kind of go like this down. I can see the person, I can see the companies they work for, and I can just go do, 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 do send invitations, and you can boost your LinkedIn, LinkedIn numbers faster that way too. So you're not just having to, you know, search for a bunch of people. If you're looking for people in the writing industry that you're wanting to connect with, find people who are in the writing industry and see who their connections are. It helps you weed out. The Goodreads thing. If you go to your profile down to friends and get on that page, that's where it says find friends from Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, and friends of friends. So Ooh, friends of friends. I need to do that. Yeah, that was a good that was a good tip. That's a great tip. And like you said, then you could turn around and use it in your marketing section. But yeah. wow, the good reads has ju jumped by five hundred percent in the last six months is impressive. It may only have been by twenty people, but Right. <laughs> You're reporting the percentage, right? And create your little Excel worksheet to make sure you're tracking your platform numbers. You know, we've talked about this before too. So I'm trying to do this the first of every month is just go through and put down, um, you know, all the different ones and I total those. And then I've got like serious writer stuff and like, if they're not like totally connected with me, but a little bit connect with me. So I've got their numbers too. And then I have another little third group where it's um, like I do Twitter followers. It's up at the top, but it's also down at the bottom because I also put how many people I'm following. So I get a connect, you know, I sort of can see how that's growing. And I think I'm even now putting how many tweets I do because I don't do, a, haven't done a lot of tweets like I should considering how long I've had this account. So I'm wanting to see growth there. And I put like Instagram followers and Instagram I'm following. So then I can also see those growth, but that what I'm following can't be part of my platform numbers up top. So sometimes I've got right. them in two places. And then I've also added my Amazon ranking for the first of the month. And it's interesting to see how that goes up and down. And I did go back my author ranking and I've got like the worst I ever was and I've got the date and I've got the best I ever was in the date. So I can just sort of see, you know, how things, how, how things are going. So, you know, that's another just habit to do. The, like I don't always do it on the first. I think this month it was the second or the third, but you know, track those and you, and it's fun to see those numbers grow. It's. And I it's can share to mine that. if you'd like to see. What I I pulled mine up if you guys would like to okay. see yeah it's like so let me know if yeah we can see that we're still friends so I actually break it down by Facebook the friends of the follows and the likes because those are different numbers sometimes you have more people following you than actually liked your page I do that so too yeah I've got it all separated. And then I have um, the blacked out ones, the grade ones are the ones that I didn't have dates for. And so PGR in the G column is percentage growth rate for those oh, dates. I didn't do that. Wow. And I really yeah. like the ones that are um, yeah. significant, like yeah. Goodreads. I went from like 530 to over a thousand just by doing that Twitter thing. I just did the Twitter thing. <laughs> <laughs> So I need to update this again. I usually update mine and I have my, then I, Serious Writer, that's my company. So those numbers count for me too. So think about other things that you're part of that you admin or your, that you can add numbers into your platform. And I, I do those as well. And then in my proposals, the bigger numbers, like the, the over the 50% anyway, um, yeah. I highlight those in the proposal to show like how much growth I've received in this amount of time. And then the ones like, um, I think my Facebook business likes 2.99% growth in that amount of time. That's terrible. So now I can look at this and say, okay, my strategies for these highlighted ones are working. And now I need to go back to Facebook and why am I not connecting there? And so this can also give you a checkup on where you need to be spending some more time instead of just guessing. So the analytics are super, super important. And, and this is just a really basic social media tracker. And you can see my toolbar. I don't have a lot up here, but I go to Amazon all the time. So it has its own. Um, right here for Amazon and Amazon Prime now. And then I have, you know, just a few different things up there and it just makes work a whole lot faster because I can get to, I can access things faster. So. Wow. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. That is really cool. 
Um, another thing to do is like if you use Canva or PicMonkey, and I don't use PicMonkey, so I don't know about storing photos, but if you use Canva for work, which I love, you have folder capability and you can upload photos and they stay there. So cleaning some of those out um, is a good idea at this time too, because sometimes I can't find what I'm looking for because I've uploaded so many photos that I don't need anymore because I needed them for one project mm -hmm. that I could delete or I could organize that a little bit better and that would help as well. Um, and I think my last tip, because I know we're coming up on the hour, is this is a good time to start learning or tweaking or cleaning out your social media scheduler and figuring out exactly what kind of um, program is going to work for you and when. And getting rid of, like, there's also a good time to go into Facebook and see how many groups you're a part of and get, um, join them, like leave groups that are no longer active. I mean, I have so many that I have joined at one time over the last how many years has Facebook been available to everybody? Um, so just cleaning those out, getting rid of some of that is another easy thing to do when you're. I got a big long list. Which social media schedulers are you using currently? Me? Yes, just curious. Um, me, Edgar. Okay, I thought that you were a fan of that one. I you am, I love everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can set up your categories. It gives you a schedule. Um, I really like me, Edgar. I mean, I've gone back and forth three times, and I always yeah. end up coming back. So uh, I'm a fan. <laughs> me, Edgar. What's the more economical one that starts with a P? Post planner. Post planner. That's the one I want to. Buffer learn. is also one. It depends Market. on how many accounts. Buffer. Buffer, yeah. It, like mm -hmm. I need one that has a lot. I need to be able to hook up a lot of accounts. Sure. And me, Edgar gives you that capability underneath that one price. So yeah. yeah. Uh, Mary asked what it costs. It is a little pricey, but Bethany little... does do a lot with it. So I think it's worth it for her. It would it's not be worth it for me to pay that. Much. I wouldn't recommend it for you, Mom. No. It's forty nine a month, and then if you pay annually, you get like one or two months free. They always do deals and stuff. So I just do like an annual cost on it. And I, 50, I would pay 50 bucks to have an assistant do this for me in a heartbeat and I'd have to pay more for that. So that's where my, that's where the weighing comes in for me on all that me Edgar can do. It's really, it's a pretty powerful program. But post planner, I think I've been, was reading about it just the other day too. And it's very economical. And if you're just mm -hmm. starting out and needing a scheduler and we've talked about it before, and I know people have recommended it on writer's chat before. So I think that's the one I'm going to go with to start mm -hmm. out. Um, if you only have like a few accounts, like if you have a Twitter, a LinkedIn, mm -hmm. you know, a few Facebook things, you need like less than seven, don't go with the Edgar. <laughs> right, right. That's... But I do love him. Something I did last year at this time, and it, this made me think about it when we talk about post spending money. Mm -hmm. I made a list, and I have it, so I need to pull this out. This is what I should do this year. Made a list of things throughout the year I've subscribed to in uh, ongoing. You know, mm -hmm. co-schedule is an example. Post planner is a schedule for me. Um, the uh, I can't think of anything else, but I have a list of things that it comes up, you know, and you should probably step back on a hole and say, do I really need co-schedule and post planner at the same time? this would be the time of year to look at some of those ongoing costs. Yeah. Is there a better one? Are you ready to move up to something like meet Edgar? If so, then next July, I've got to cancel the one. I did that last year. I put it on the calendar at 2018 yeah, yeah. in July, 2018 to cancel this and no longer take it and switch to. So I kind of pre-planned some of this, mm -hmm. switch, but you can also, it, it's a good, it's just good accounting to step back and say, what are you spending money on for this blog or this writer's yeah. business? Do that, do we still need to do? Tailwind another one. I'm, Sorry. I'm going to um, purchase Tailwind at some point. I'm still using their free trial. I have sat there and with Tailwind off and on, off and on. And I'm thinking that's, I said that last year, I was going to purchase it this year and I didn't. I haven't purchased I'm yet. But. Thinking because I think that's an additional, both for Instagram and Pinterest, mm -hmm. it's probably the scheduler. It's specific for those, for those who don't know. And yeah, I was, Bethany told me about it and I've been on the website too and not quite ready to, to take that on yet. But um, yeah, that sounds good. It's, um, Rachel mentioned in the chat about having her website critiqued by Rhonda Dragomir. We've been doing that and we've had like, I, I'm not sure five or six critiques of websites. 
which have been really good. We did record those. We're not making those public public, but if you're interested in seeing one of them, you know, let me know because I do have those recordings. Um, and Rachel is implementing the things that Rhonda told her. So we kind of put that on hold right now. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Rhonda's with us today, but we're, um, we will be doing more of those in the new year. So if you're interested in having Rhonda um, critique your website and having that recorded, please let either Rhonda or me know so that we can make sure that that happens at some point in the future. I think that'd be great. It is noon. It, it is, is noon. Thank you. Thank you. This has been, I have one and a half pages of notes here. <laughs> I didn't make that many, but I got <laughs> well, it's It was nuts of things that, they, yeah, you got it too. To, fo to follow up, I think, I, and I really love the inspiration to, th these are things we could do while we're doing something else yes. during the holidays, or the, I got to work on my computer for about an hour, guys, I'll be back and then get yeah. that break. Yes. Yeah. Stuff. I th this has been good. This has been great. Jan said this has been fun, and I think it has yeah, been. It's amazing what you can do in an hour if you just put your mind to it. And just, yeah. You know, just and do you guys, while we're still recording, want to tell everybody what next week's topic is going to be? Because sure. I know. Bethany, do you want to go ahead and do that? Yeah. So we are. We uh, did a last minute little change, <laughs> um, mostly because we thought it would be better for you guys. <laughs> so um, we were going to talk about planners in January, but. You're going to be buying the planners now and you can yeah. ask for them for Christmas. So we thought we would do planners next week so everybody can figure out like different. Yeah. <laughs> I love the happy planner and I also love bullet journals and I use them together. So like we're going to talk about all things planners and um, electronic and paper, which one works best for you. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> so bring your opinion. We need some side by side comparison. Like that. I yeah. love planners. I'm always buying extra ones and trying things. And I have a pile down here that about three years old that I just need to get rid of, I guess. So that'll be one thing I'll do. Yeah. And I uh, even like created my own planner and sold it for like two years because I couldn't find one that worked for me and finally found the the Bethany planner that I love. So um, I'm excited to talk about all things planner. Maybe um, I might be able to give away some like copies of the old ones if I can get the PDFs done. <laughs> okay. um, and then in January, when we come back for the new year, the one that we're going to do planners, we're going to talk about how to do freelance writing. And so since, um, since we want you to do like cleaning stuff out and kind of relaxing over the holidays, we didn't want you guys to get all like, I got to do freelance work right before Christmas. So we're going to do that when we come back in January. Right. Perfect. This is the perfect time of year where you're often inspired to uh, declutter and clean and kind of reorganize, get rid of one year into the other. And so we hope this has been inspirational to everybody today. And thank you again, Bethany. This has been absolutely just what I needed to hear. This is great. Great. And uh, Mary's asked yeah. real quick, will next week be the last yeah. for the year? And I believe that answer is it yes. Is. It is. We'll start yeah. up again. We'll take a little bit of a Christmas break and we'll start up again. So yeah. thank you for asking that, Mary. That is, you that too, yeah. Yeah. So that is great. And we've got that on the recording so people will yeah. know. And, so, uh, and uh, we look cool. forward to seeing everybody next week and seeing everybody then into 2019 mm -hmm. and be organized, clean, ready to go. Thanks, everybody. Bye Thanks, now. Thanks, everyone. We'll be back on January 8th, just so everyone knows. And if you're watching on the replay, we're glad you did. You can join us live on Writer's Chat every Tuesday morning, except for the two weeks that we're off for Christmas <laughs> that we just talked about. Um, we're going to be cluttering and cleaning those days. <laughs> yeah, December 18th, and then nothing until January 8th, but 11 o'clock Eastern, 10 o'clock Central, we're usually here. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.